the incidents um, that happened New Year's Day early in the morning. We, as the media, learned about them because the victims came forward to us. We didn't hear about it through police communication. Right. Is that in line with your policy of transparency? No, I mean, obviously, we like to get out information if we think it's of some relevance to the community, relevance as it relates to their safety, or relevance as it relates to information that can help us bring their, whatever their matter to some closure. Uh, and I think as it was stated uh, earlier in an earlier interview by some of my staff, some of that information we did not get until a day or two days later. So after we got those three particular incidents that you're referring to, uh, and we looked at them, while we're not, we still are not sure if there's any kind of relationship between the three. Uh, we're not sure if they're a part of the uh, knockout gang, uh, but we felt it was important enough to get that information out to the community to let them know um, that we did have these incidents because they were in a relatively close vicinity. Uh, and, and that Lodo area is a very crowded area, as you all know, during those evening hours. So we were sending out that information because we did want to alert the community, even though the, the descriptions were very vague, extremely vague, but we still wanted to alert the community. And at the same time, we were trying to uh, recruit the community for any assistance that they might have that could help us bring it to a closure. So, it, it, you know, the delay was, was not something that was by design. I mean, we got the information out relatively soon, as soon as we were able to put those three pieces together. But as you know, crimes in that area are so sensitive because of the history there. Yes. So is there a threshold, though, when you have to say, we need to get this out immediately as opposed to discussing and comparing? Well, you know, I think that the, the, the threshold is, like I had mentioned earlier, it is, is getting the information out, is it something that the community needs to be alerted to, or is it something that the community can help us identify the individuals. And in the case of uh, the three incidents that you were referring to, we felt that it was beneficial to do that on both accounts. We wanted to alert the community, but at the same time, we're really asking for assistance because there were poor descriptions uh, of, of, the, of the suspects. Uh, but given the vicinity in which those incidents occurred, we felt it was important enough to get it out there to make sure uh, that we did alert the community. So, so with that said, I just want to be clear here. Do you feel that your policy of transparency was handled in a timely manner with these cases? Yeah, I mean, given the lateness, you know, the, the crimes occur on one day, but it wasn't reported until us, one particular crime wasn't reported until us until either a day or two earlier. You know, ideally, uh, if it's something that we want to get out to alert or or to recruit information, the sooner we get it out, the better it is. So my, my policy is, as it relates to transparency, is getting the information out expeditiously as possible. But when we get it out, it needs to be meaningful information at the same time. So you feel that goal was achieved in that case? I, I feel, yeah. I mean, p could we have gotten it out maybe a couple hours earlier? Possibly, but given the, given the particulars of those three incidents, I, I think we got it out as about as, as about as as quick as we could have. Okay, I just, I'm gonna ask you a couple other questions about some broader issues about, about this, but I just, I just wanna follow up on one point. I think that you know, eyebrows are being raised, so to speak, because we learned about these incidents from the victims first and not from law enforcement. You know, and, you know, and unfortunately, sometimes that occurs. Sometimes the victims will go to the media before they come to the police. I mean, and if you bring it to our attention, obviously we will act on it, which, which we did. I mean, and we prefer to be the first notified, but sometimes we're not always the first individuals notified. Sometimes a victim will be a, a victim of a crime, which happened in one of these incidents, and wait until 28, 24, 48 hours later to notify us. And sometimes prior to even notifying us, they are notified the media. So that happens sometimes. But what I think is important is once we get the information and once we make some sense out of it, uh, if it's of any relevance, we need to get it out as expeditiously as possible. Okay, then my, my final point on this, on this matter is, do you feel in hindsight this could have been handled differently or do you think this was by the book? Well, you know, in, in hindsight, uh, actually we're, we've been talking about uh, those particular crimes and talking about crimes in general as it relates to, as it relates to the Lodo, the Lodo area, because we've actually made a lot of progress when we compare 2012 to 2013. It's been a significant decrease in, in aggravated assaults, which these are pretty much under the umbrella of aggravated assaults, and robberies and larcenies. Those are the three dominant challenges that we have in the Lodo area, and we've made a lot of progress. Uh, 
And the reason this information is being handed out expeditiously, apparently not as expeditiously as you think it should be, uh, and the reason that we handed out, we, we sent out alerts for two additional uh, offenses that occurred last night, is that we want to try to get in front of this so we don't have a, a repeat of some of the criticism and some of the issues that occurred back in 2008. So, you know, you're asking me if could we have gotten it out earlier? If we had just acted on one or two of those incidents, we could have gotten it out earlier. But after looking at the three of them collectively and looking that there was a possible pat pattern, uh, we couldn't have gotten it out any earlier because we didn't get all the information from all three of those crimes at the same time. So the victims have been white. The uh, aggravators, for lack of better words, have all been, have been black men. Is there concern that there is a racial component to this? Is well, there evidence let me that say this. There, there, is, there is a concern when anyone's a victim of a crime, whether it's a, a, a black a victim and a, and a white suspect or a Latino victim and a, and a black suspect. Those are con concerns. But obviously, part of what our responsibility is to look at patterns, uh, to look at MOs, modest of operation by individuals, and see if we can tie them together. So the fact that it's a white victim and a a black suspect, I mean, obviously from our perspective, we're, we're trying to determine is that a pattern? And if in fact it is remotely some kind of pattern, obviously it's a concern. But I will tell you, one crime is a concern for us, regardless of, of what the race of the individual. The race from our perspective is, is prim primarily used to help us identify who's committing those crimes, regardless of what their race is. So as far as race, these, let's say five crimes now, being racially motivated, it's too early to tell. I, yeah, I, I, can't, I cannot definitively say that these crimes are racially motivated versus these are individuals that are committing crimes on, in, on, on innocent uh, victims, okay. uh, regardless of what their race is at this particular time. And then my colleague uh, who's been working on the story earlier than me, uh, you know, I know we've been asking the department, are there halo cameras, are there surveillance pictures? Yeah. You, I you, just you, find it hard to believe there in this yeah. city, there are none. Well, yeah, you know what, and, and actually that is something that we've been looking at. And we're going to do some different strategies, and I don't want to get into particular of that because I don't want to compromise those strategies. But actually one of the first things that we did do as it relates to these incidents is to see if there were any cameras in the area that could help us. And we, as of this time, uh, we don't have any useful information from any cameras. Okay. I mean, when you say useful information. We I don't have any information that, that no would contribute to to these incidents from cameras. Okay. No, no, nothing, none of, nothing, no, nothing, was caught on nothing of, 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 any, of any importance, of any substance uh, as it relates to these, these, particular, these particular incidents. Okay, and I'm going to be the, like the sixth grade teacher and just, yeah, just press you on. Zero. There are no images Zero. of these attacks. Zero, we have nothing. Okay, are, are you pursuing the local businesses perhaps? We, we are, we are abso absolutely. Okay. I, mean, we, I mean, it's not just Lodo. Anytime there's an offense occur, uh, and if there's cameras remotely anywhere near the offense, uh, whether it's one of our cameras or whether it's our uh, RTD camera or whether it's a business camera, I mean, one of the first things we do is go to that location to see if we can retrieve that information and see if there's anything on those cameras that would be helpful. Okay, and, and then just to, to kind of wrap things up here, um, you know, on, on Twitter, because that is where people are getting news these days, yes. um, there has been a, a point from the department's tweets to say we have to, you know, you know, a city of this size certainly has problems, and you know we don't want to magnify a problem that isn't there by reporting every single incident, which I think fairly will happen in a, in, in a major metro area. With that said, when do you have to say when do when do you look at what's presented and say there is a crime problem downtown? Well, we, we look at we look at patterns. We look at uh, when I say a pattern, we look at the type of crime. We look at the location of the crime. We look at the uh, the, the description of the individuals. Uh, so we, we have to collectively look at all of that information and if it remotely uh, has the overtones of a pattern uh, or if it's a safety issue, that's when we make a decision to either send the information out as an alert to the community or send the information out as asking for assistance from the community uh, in that they might have saw something that we didn't get. So based on the series of events that we've seen since the first of the year, does that series spell yeah, out yeah. a problem? Based, based on, uh, you know, like I had stated, we have really made some uh, inroads as it relates to Lodo, as it relates to aggravated assaults, larcenies, and robberies. Those are pretty much the, uh, the crimes that are more, if they're going to occur, those are the crimes that we really can't focus on in the Lodo area. Uh, and we made some progress comparing 2012 to 2013. So in an effort 
to try to get in front of that, uh, that's why we're sending this information out uh, uh, early, uh, early, as early as possible. You know, the, the other two incidents that occurred last night, they were kind of in the central downtown area. Mm -hmm. But again, we just felt that it was important to get that information out and continue to ask for assistance because we really don't have really good, strong uh, suspects or a really good, strong identification. So we're asking for help, and at the same time, we want to uh, alert the community uh, that, that are in, that's in that general vicinity exactly what's happening. So it's of concern to you? Yes, absolutely it's of concern to me. But to call it a problem, is that too strong? I wouldn't call it a problem. I mean, I, I would call one crime an issue and a challenge. But when I see the, the pattern of those three, uh, I, I think that is something we need to try to get on top of. And just to wrap things up, wh where, where do you go from here? Well, I mean, we, we, need to be con we need to continue to be diligent. Uh, you know, we, we're speaking of Lodo, but this, could, this approach would be the same anywhere in the city. Uh, and I think it's important to say that. As it relates to Lodo, we're kind of looking at the strategies that we're doing, that we're using. Uh, we probably need to regroup some of, do some different strategies. Uh, spend a little bit more time digging down from a crime analyst perspective to see if we can get the exact hour, uh, the exact location, continue to have a relationship with those businesses in that area. Uh, you know, and when you talk, uh, talk about Lodo, we have some challenges in Lodo on the weekends as it relates to overcrowding and overserving. Mm -hmm. So we want to continue to connect with, with those businesses that are serving and that are contributing to the overcrowding. So, you know, the, the, the city actually is in the process of kind of doing a, a holistic approach as it relates to the Lodo area. What can we do better as a city to ensure that the patrons there are safe and that they're having an enjoyable time? My last question is this. Do you think downtown, the Lodo area, is a safe place to be at night? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, yes, I do think it is safe. I mean, is it free of crime? No, it's not free of crime. Just given the magnitude of the, the number of individuals down there, given the fact that there are a lot of people doing a lot of drinking, and unfortunately there are individuals that will take advantage of individuals that are, that are down there. And then the individuals that are down there sometimes, their interaction because of the drinking creates a problem. But, but overall, I, yeah, I would absolutely tell you that I believe downtown, specifically Lodo, if you're asking, is a, is a safe place to be. And these, but, but these do appear to be random crimes, not necessarily fueled by the nightclubs. These attacks do appear to be random. Currently, that's correct. Okay. All right. I appreciate it.